first came the collapse of civilization. Anarchy. Batman vs. Superman. The movie. Suicide Squad, which wasn't a bad film. But then we heard the rumors that someone was actually going to teach Jean-Claude Van Damme how to act. Why? I like his overacting. I like his red brown ripoff impressions. I like Cyborg! Greetings! And welcome to Canon Ball Run Friday. Tonight we are looking at Jean Claude Van Damme in the movie Cyborg. Good film, actually. Uh, let's see. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, director Albert Young wanted to make this film not so much an action film as a slightly more darker movie than Menahem Golem and uh, Yoram Globus wanted it to be. According to that uh, documentary, there's um, uh, Canon Films, uh, Electric Boogaloo, there, the untold story of Canon Films. But I think the film itself was pretty dark on its own. A lot of good fight choreography. But let's see, here's the, uh, here's the rundown. Basically, it's the 21st century. There's a plague going around. And there's uh, basically these, uh, they call them pirates, or according to the box, it was flesh pirates, but they never used that term in the film. And they're basically just wanting to, you know, get the cure. The, the scientists in Atlanta are trying to develop the cure. They want it, they want it for themselves. The leader, Fender, played by Vincent Klein, who, by the way, should be getting a lot more films than what he's getting. I've only seen this guy in, like, three other films. Um, well, two. Urban Menace, Cyborg, where he played the main villain, and Point Break, where he played a really minor part, not just basically uh, one scene with him and Keanu Reeves. But anyway, Keanu ended up winning the fight. Yeah, okay. Sure. <clears throat> anyway, um... Yeah, for those of you who uh, haven't seen Vincent Klein, good actor. Really surprised he's not getting enough roles. I mean, this guy should be doing a lot more villain roles. He's pretty, he's a really decent fighter, and you know, as a villain, <laughs> he's a lot more. He's a lot more better than some of the villains I have seen. I mean, I could see this guy being, you know, Lex Luthor before Jesse Eisenberg, but not to know the story, I suppose. Anyway, getting back to the movie, um, basically Van Damme plays Gibson Rickenbacker, Vincent Klein plays Fender Tremello. Why do I get that feeling they named their, their lead characters after guitarists, but I don't know. There was no one in there named Les Paul, surprisingly. Uh, he meets up with this one woman who decides to help him on his journey, and they basically... Uh, they basically go from point A to point B trying to find the pirates. The pirates are more or less trying to find them. Of course, the pirates have already taken the cyborg, played by Dale Haddon, who played um, Pearl Prophet. She was this woman who was a scientist who got this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to become a cyborg, and the doctors, you know, made her into a cyborg, and they were going to keep the information in her that she had gotten for the, for the cure for the plague. Of course, the pirates catch her easily. She doesn't do any fighting in this film. Uh, you know, she she's just basically there. It's like she's the title character, and she doesn't even get a fight scene. But anyway, um, Deborah Richter plays Nadine. Nadine, I'm not sure. It said Nadine in the credits. Um. She basically watched her family, well, watched her her um, village get bumped off pretty much by Fender and his pirates. It was a pretty brutal scene, and um, like I said, getting back to that for a moment, um, Vincent and um, Albert Young wanted the movie to be darker. I don't know how you could make this movie any darker. You had scenes of like... Hmm, 
<laughs> well, let's just say, uh, hmm, how do I put this? Van Damme was crucified? <laughs> That's pretty dark. That's a pretty dark film right there. I don't really know how you're going to get much darker than that. Uh, but anyway, great fight scene at the end. Although um, there is a backstory to that, whether or not supposedly there was a court settlement between Van Damme and one of the extras. You might want to delve into that behind the scenes a little more. Um, I, I don't know. Personally, I I hope the guy didn't lose his... I guess he was in danger of, li of losing his eyesight due to a bad knife scene or something. Anyway, um, that was a while back. This film came out in 89, so I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't know what the settlement was or how they did it or whatever. But, um, so basically, it was uh, down to Fender versus Gibson, and great fight scene. And, of course, there is a backstory. He knew this girl who had a sister and a little brother, and he was trying to take them out of the city. He was known as a slinger, which I'm assuming means gunslinger, because he carries a rifle and knives, and, you know, he basically kills pirates. So they end up in this house in the country. Um, the pirates end up finding them. They basically take out the... Um, the the girlfriend, the love interest, the little brother, and Van Damme, they throw them into a well, basically because the other sister couldn't hold the barbed wire. The other sister turns out to be one of the pirates, who is basically has to follow Fender around, because she's basically more or less his slave, I suppose, for lack of a better term. And Van Damme, of course, has to, and does, end up rescuing her, but... She almost gets killed, ironically, and the girl who does get killed ends up saving her life and ends up saving the cyborg's life, and you'd think the cyborg would have carried some sort of weapon. She's a cyborg, you know? Seven of nine and from Star Trek could at least fight or some shit. I mean, come on. <laughs> Carry a freaking weapon of sorts. You had enough knives there. You had something just... Mm. You know, laser in the eye? I don't know. Whatever. But, you know, uh, they weren't going to really do much with her, apparently, because she did have the information for the character of the plague, so maybe they couldn't. Anyway, um, I'd like to see a director's cut of this film if, the, if this was to ever come out. But who knows if that'll ever happen, you know. So, that's it for Cannonball Friday. Tune in next week for yet another canon film, and I'll probably be doing another review sometime within the next week itself. Until then, fare thee well.